Hello Cinema Tech Geeks, it's James Gardner here with another installment of Cine Tech Geek. Today we're going to do 3D windows. This is a very important topic, um, especially for those who are showing 3D. Um, it's uh, especially important that how you mask your 3D shows. And I'll get into it here and show you why, but we've also got a, a video from what Walt Disney with their video which uh, describes how this works and specifically they're doing something very new which is called scope on flat for GeForce and I think Avatar may be using this technique as well more of an ultra 3D where you can actually even have the 3D effect coming uh, ext extending, uh, extending outside the visible frame. Anyway um, I'll do a quick explanation first and I'll show the, the um, the Walt Disney video and then I'll go into some of the problems um, people installing these systems have uh, with keystoning and how that's just a, a bit of a nightmare for th these effects. Anyway let's get into it. Before we move on we need to understand how the images work on the screen and what our left and right eye actually sees. As uh, with 3D, the left and right eye must see different images to give us the 3D effect. Firstly, we'll start off with this blue line representing the screen, and this black ball representing a ball that we can see which is exactly at the same depth as the screen. Now, if we want something to appear in the screen, here we go. The ball appears to be further away than the actual screen. To do that, we the eyes actually see a, a ball here and here for each eye given the perception that is, the ball is behind the screen and same if we have something that is in front of the screen we have this effect going on. Now this is important to understand because when things move off the edge of the screen we have this effect. If the ball is in front of the screen in this case and it is moving off the screen, the left, got, the left eye will still be able to see the ball while the right eye will no longer be able to see the ball when it gets close to the edge of the screen. This I call uh, 3D artifacts or errors that you can see on objects in 3D. And it's very important to understand and it might be something that may confuse you when you're watching, watching a 3D film. Now this is an important issue and it explains exactly why um, the following has been done for um, masking and positioning 3D films on the screen. Here we have a screen grab from the Walt Disney example video. In this frame, which is representing the 2048 by 1080 frame, you have the normal flat area which is 1998 across which makes this red area not used but still we have this other black area on the side or unused visible area as I call it here this is unused to allow us to um, show objects which are behind or, or in front of the screen passing off the edge of the screen and still allowing them to have that 3D effect even though they have actually gone over the visible area. This is very important because when you are masking you need to make sure that you do not mask out this visible area which is what any installer would do or projectionist would naturally do if they put this image up on the screen for framing. And this is a common thing where all 3D films are sent with a framing file which, uh, which I'll show you which is coming from Walt Disney for the GeForce video. Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures provides show specific framing charts for each title. This is the framing chart for Walt Disney Pictures GeForce. This unique title features a scope image framed within a flat container so it is critical that the framing chart is carefully followed to ensure proper presentation of GeForce. GeForce employs a 3D technique that makes use of breaking the frame, in which the black letterboxes at the top and bottom of the image are actually usable pixels, 
and the image will, on occasion, employ these pixels for the 3D effect. As you can see, the GeForce frame uses a standard 1998 by 1080 flat aspect ratio. Contained within that frame is a scope image, resulting in a black padding at the top and bottom of the frame. This padding is used during the film when content spills off the frame and into the black. As a result, it is critical that this black padding remains on the screen and is not masked out to prevent the loss of the 3D effect. Observe the effect of incorrectly masking the screen to fit the scope frame. When the masking intrudes into the padding at the top and the bottom of the frame image, the image is cropped and the 3D effect is lost. To successfully frame GeForce, simply follow the provided framing chart, taking special care to ensure that the yellow lines at the top and the bottom of the chart remain visible, even after masking. Once the screen is correctly masked to the framing chart, do not make any further adjustments to the screen or projector to ensure that the framing of this film is maintained. To maintain proper framing throughout GeForce's release, repeat this framing process on each screen before the first showing of GeForce every day. Now stand by for the GeForce 3D framing chart. Finally, let's have a look at the problems that may occur using this 3D technique. Here we have an ideal cinema setup. We've got our seats in our screen and our projector up the back here. It's completely horizontal. Um, there's no key stoning. That it's it's just using the lens shift to give the picture on screen perfectly as required. Now this is great, but unfortunately it's not common with a lot of 3D installs. Because when you do a 3D install, it's an expensive investment, so you're likely going to put it in your largest auditorium, meaning you're going to have a lot of seats, and the projector is going to probably be up higher, resulting in the need for an angle. Even with your lens shift, you won't be able to achieve the required um, position on screen, so you can. it's unavoidable that an angle will need to be put on the projector. This produces keystone, the keystone effect. Now, what is the keystone effect? Well, as you can see here, the top of the screen will be closer to the projector than the bottom of the screen, resulting in the following. The top of the screen being closer will be smaller than the bottom of the screen. So you have this, this effect happening. Now, when we need to mask this, we have to do this. And of course, as you can see here, we can no longer achieve correct masking to, uh, to maximize or produce this 3D effect or um, the unseen area being visible on screen because it just doesn't line up with the masking on the side here. This is a, a, a quite a big problem with um, this technique. Um, it doesn't affect the Ultra 3D as seen in the Disney video. But in my opinion, it is the sides which are more important because our eyes and the camera travels from side to side most of the time. Anyway, that's it for 3D Windows. I've hoped you found this video um, informative. It's quite an uh, important new issue with 3D. And I hope this video um, helps people understand this, this technique and also those producing 3D um, have a better understanding of what's happening on the cinema screen and how they can um, maximize their 3D workflow to achieve the most uh, effective results considering um, these techniques used in 3D exhibition. Thank you, this is James Gardner and bye for now.